<laughs> All right, everybody. Now, today we want to talk about what the Italians call chiaro scuro, which was clear dark. Some people, uh, I asked El Monaco, uh, what color do you look for? And he said, he said, uh, uh, scuro brillante. <laughs> he said, dark and brilliant, right? So the idea is that when you're singing, there's supposed to be both of these components at the same time, a bright, clear, metallic sound with some mellowness on it. Now, if I sing in the nose, my nasal, then forget everything. You can't do anything. So you must not sing in the nose. If I sing like this, <laughs> Not a lot of people like that. Sounds pretty good in a room, maybe on a recording, but if I get a great big theater with a big orchestra, then nobody can hear me in the back of the theater. And people can't really believe that, or you can try it out for yourself. But for, you know, for years, they've had singers, some of them with fabulous voices, but couldn't be heard in big theaters because the voices were too low here in what they call the false mask, which is down here. Caruso said in his book about page three or something, he said, never sing into the nasal cavity. And the reason was they didn't carry. They had to project new music, new words, new stories, new texts, and that sound good when they did it. So the nose was simply forbidden. So what do I do then? Now, it's easy to show you what I'm talking about. And you realize my voice is complete in my nose. So how do I do this then? It's not in my nose at all. It's all up here above my nose. I'm seeing up here. Little Lehman in her book described the, the, the true mask, she called it. It went all the way in the eyebrows, all the way back over the top of the head to the middle of your head. So she had a mask about that big. No wonder she was the all-time Isolde of history, right? But what we want to do is, is, is we don't want to, to, some people do this. Tell me something, do you, is this nasal? How many of you think that's nasal? See? And now we'll get the answer, won't we? The test is always to pinch the nose while you're singing. If it's going through my nose, it's, you're going to hear it to me and not pinch my nose. There's no effect on the tone. So it's not nasal. What is that awful sound? How do I do that then? And this brings up something called shallow phonation. I'm saying my ah vowel like this. Ah. See? And if I do that, then you hear there's no scuro at all. No, no, there's no mellowness, no darkness, mellowness in that tone whatsoever. So what you're supposed to do then is not say the vowels forward, folks. All these singers trying to sing forward, and they take their vowels forward, and their voices get uglier and uglier, and, but they don't project any better, but, and they have no color because they're losing the scudo part of the voice, the dark part of the voice. Now, the other way to do this would be a variation of the old Garcia method, where you would take a deep breath in your trachea and your throat, and everything would relax. It's very important to understand how to breathe so the throat stays loose. I want all is up here to be loose, and I want my, my, my pharynx to be like that, and I want to have all my vowels and everything. And how do I get that to happen? Do I just use muscles and shape it in the back of my neck? When I did that in college, I was a bass. Oh, 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 oh. So, so you can't do it with muscles up here. So what you do is you reach way down underneath, in this case, way down in the lower back, and you pull this down like this, and the whole upper part just follows and goes like this. So the entire trachea relaxes, and you have a vertical open throat, and the pharynx and everything, the pharynx does this, opens backwards, and the, 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 the front of it sort of tilts up a little, so the resonance comes up and hits you up here, and it sounds like this, right? So I go... No, what am I doing, though, see? When at that time, I didn't do anything. My throat, I said it like that. You might say, well, that's my natural throat. Well, I don't know, is it? Here's a great word, this word natural. We have to be careful. If you're asleep at night, will you have your open throat? Will you have your natural throat? Well, maybe. See, turns out you sleep. Some people sleep like this. 
Well, what open throat is that? And some people sleep like this. Is that clear dark? Did it have metal on it? Did it have a round, mellow quality to it? If it did, I'm starting to get uh, this, this callous school of tone. So the worst, the, the worst thing that, that, that you can do probably is, ex is exaggerate either one of those in either direction. Because if you have like that, the voice just gets ugly and ah, and if you do this way, it, it gets so far, so, so you'll sound really great about one foot away and then nobody can hear you. I used to sing, oh, young bass, wonderful young bass, but except if I sang one violin played, you couldn't hear me. That sound doesn't doesn't project at all. But the other thing that was interesting was that it sounds like I'm singing, except that's that's that won't be heard at all either. Right? It'll 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 be heard better than that phony throaty sound I make as a bass. But it's still not going to cut through a big orchestra. That sound, for some reason, blends blends in within with the orchestra instruments. So I've got to find one somehow that well that will that will project and let's say cut through. I sang a lot of you know big big operas with big orchestras and big theaters, and I'm telling you, you the problem with those is if you're singing with the wrong phonation, they won't hear you, and you get desperate and don't know what to do. And the whole idea is to start all over, go find a teacher that understands projection and sung a lot, and let's find out what's going on now. There are other ways to do it. Uh, here's, here's, here's one natural picture. What is this baby doing? First of all, look at the shape of the mouth. That's what um, uh, uh, Marcello Zambridge called an oval lying on its side. See that? But the other thing that's interesting about that baby is he's doing this. So if I do this, what do you think will happen to my aval? Will I have a chiaro scudo or will I have a... Uh, I don't know what. Let's see. So here we go. I'm going to right in the back of my head, right here. So it's not in my nose, and it's uh, you might say it's dominated by the by the chiaro. It has a bright a bright sound to it, and. Uh, that is, a, uh, if you're singing certain music where it's sort of happy and maybe young and whatever, then maybe you need that sound. I don't want to sound too old. I don't want to sound like somebody's grandpa, although I'm 85 years old now, and I am a grandpa many times. <laughs> and, and I don't know, I, I, I think the last thing I want to do is sound like the real me. Right? So, but the other one is, if the other extreme is you pull your, you reach way down between your shoulder blades, and you pull your hands forward, and you put your your back backward, and you push against each other, and you get this. Now, what do you think about that sound? I don't know. What do you think? Because it's going to carry like a rocket. I tell you, I've done it many times. See? No, no, my nose at all. But that's maybe too scuro, too dark. So what is one of the one of the ways for getting chiaro scuro is to get half of, of one and half of the other. They say the ideal tone is 50-50, right? So let's say I go down from here and I, I, I remember where that place was between my shoulder blades. So I'm only going to go halfway down. And if I go halfway down, then I keep some of this upper one that's bright and I pick up some of the one that's darker that's down low and I'm pulling back of my neck like this. I'm going. <laughs> now, what do you think? Is that callous guru? Is it nasal? <laughs> no, it's not nasal at all. So here we have to almost, I don't know what, experiment around. And we're not talking about voice category here. We're talking about light, very light, high spread voices. Ladies can still sing with a, with a mellow sound that is nice and pingy or ringy, right? 
And some of the biggest basses in the world, some of those huge, low voices, can still sing bright. I wouldn't say too bright, uh, but because they have to distort them. We don't want to distort the throat. No, so if I take a breath like this, that's how my throat went. If I do a happy surprise, I go, what are you doing here? Get it? So the things I do, like breathing, and maybe trying to keep me, have a relaxed throat like when I'm asleep, things like that, they all start having an effect on the, on the, 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 the proportions of brightness or darkness in my voice. And very often the music uh, that you're singing, you know, the role you're singing, you're, you're playing your character, and you don't want him too bright or too dark. See? Now, in my case, in my particular case, it doesn't matter if I sound too young because I can't sound young anymore. <laughs> but when I was young, then I could sound too young and then I could sound older if I was sounded like I was getting a bit woofy. My sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, woofy voice would, would sound older, but it, but it also didn't carry well. But the, the one that was in my nose that was nice and bright didn't carry well. So you, you start looking for one and you realize that babies go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and they have this thing that Garcia, Manuel Garcia the second, taught it all the time, called the miniature cough. And he was very insistent that it be miniature. You must not make a big cough. A big cough will make you go like this. Oh, 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 oh. you don't want that. But you don't want to hack, hack, hack. You don't want to hack either. So if I can go, ah, 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 Is that a pretty good approximation of, of a baby's uh, ah, right? And it's interesting that Garcia especially used to do this business about breathing all the way down and relaxing the trachea all the way to the bottom and pulling way down here. He talked about breathing in the lower back all the time. And you pull this way down like that and the throat goes like that. No. If you do that and you want to sing some bright young music, right? Then think about what happens to the sound. If I go... It sounds like the Duke's, uh, the Duke and Rigoletto. It sounds like his grandfather, maybe, or something. That sounds like the real me, in other words. I don't want to do that. So, what would I do then? Well, I can do that, but I'm going to sacrifice some color. It's not, it's going to, not going to be mellow if I do that. And if I do the babies, uh, <laughs> well, that's a little better. Not nasal, see? Babies go, <laughs> everybody thinks they're nasal. <laughs> but they're not. See? So then we have to say, wait a minute, are their, are their vowels really shallow enough to make them sound nasal? Well, you know, it depends on the baby, I suppose. I've had, I've had uh, four children of my own now, I've got a bunch of grandchildren, and they all go, ah, 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 I went that way. My, when my children were little, they did that. So then we start going and looking for references, and we, can, we look for the great singers. Caruso said, for instance, the ah vowel is very far back and low in the throat. See, not just low in the throat, but back and low in the throat. And not just back either, but back and low in the throat. So if I do what, uh, what uh, uh, Giovanni Lampetti said to do, he came, I think his book was, written, was published something like 36 years after uh, Garcia's the second book, something like that. And he said, wait a minute, you know, my son Garcia has been studying babies now for years, and everything works fine except... See, somehow it didn't notice that babies say, ah. So, if I do the miniature cough and go, ah, 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 I say a lot of operas that way. I say mostly uh, what they call youthful hero parts, like Lohengrin, Meister Singer, uh, Parsifal, uh, Freischutz, German operas like that, big thick orchestras, a lot of, um, a lot of middle voice singing. And so I would sing, but it sounds ridiculous if you do that 
in Rigoletto and the Duke, or in, in, or in Bohème, <laughs> this young poet supposed to be singing, In povertà mia lieta, sarà gran signore. In povertà mia lieta, sarà gran signore. Right? Oh, let's see here if I can pause. <clears throat> no, I don't know how to pause. Oh. <sighs> Honey, what is it? All right, I'll be coming. All right, now we will carry on. I'll go to number two after this one, and we'll carry on. I've got to go and do uh, a chore. But start thinking in terms right now of using phonation to find the balance between clear and dark, or in some people's case, metallic and mellow or brilliant and round. So there are different ways to describe it. And we will do a number two on this one. Okay? Okay, bye.